This is Mikhail Bardavid in Almaty, Kazakhstan right now for CGTN. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the agriculture industry in Kazakhstan, specifically the economic cooperation between China and Kazakhstan regarding agriculture. However, first, I want to talk about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization because these two countries are both full members, they're founding members of the SCO, uh, and we have a very significant summit coming up in China in June of the SCO. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of an intro, a little bit of a preview of why the SCO is actually very significant, uh, how they are actually taking joint action, uh, what kind of uh, mutual cooperation are the SCO countries uh, doing in order for them to be profit and benefits for countries who are member states. Now, so let's give a little bit of an intro to the SCO before we start talking about the agriculture industry. Um, first of all, the main aim of the SCO is to develop economic growth uh, to increase social and cultural cooperation for all the member states. Uh, they, they, they want to increase the standard of living for the people of the founding member states. So these are all very significant. They want to take joint action to increase the lives, to improve the lives of the people of their of the countries who are uh, states. Now, uh, let's give uh, information about the states. So there is Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, Russia, China, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, who are all there since the beginning of the SCO was founded. However, last year there were two other countries who were also added as uh, states for the SCO, and these are India and Pakistan. So they are also, also going to be joining the summit, they are also going to be joining the joint actions, the strong mechanisms that all of these countries are putting together in order to increase uh, the economic growth of all the countries in these regions. Now, one other specific aim of the SCO, which is also very significant, is to increase stability and peace in the region. So they want to take joint action to combat terrorism, to combat extremism uh, in, the, in the area, in Central Asia specifically. So this is one of the main uh, areas that they show a lot of cooperation. But uh, today we're going to be talking about different industries where they show some cooperation and today it will be, the focus will be on agriculture. However, uh, there are also other areas that they do um, increase cooperation. And for example, uh, we also observed one significant uh, area and that's energy cooperation. In the assignment here in, uh, in uh, Kazakhstan, we went to uh, the area of Atasu and we, we witnessed the pipeline uh, the pump station of the Atasu Alashanku pipeline. And this is also a very significant um, area of cooperation because it's energy, it's a vital area. And this is the significant cooperation between Kazakhstan and China. The Atasu Alashanku pipeline basically carries oil from, uh, uh, from Kazakhstan, from Western Kazakhstan, through the pipeline, through different stations, and it takes it all the way to China. So this is a very significant area that they've been cooperating. Now, I also want to give you a little bit of information about the economy of Kazakhstan, because it's also very significant. Now, uh, it's a very growing economy in Kazakhstan. Uh, the size of the economy of Kazakhstan is actually twice the size of Ukraine. So it's a very growing and large economy. Also, the GDP of Kazakhstan is bigger than all of the stands uh, that were part of the Soviet Union. And of course, when we take it together with China, which is the world's second largest economy, these are, they create a lot of potential for economic growth, for investments, mutual investments. Uh, so when these two large economies uh, start to cooperate, there's a lot of potential, of course. Now, today we're going to be focusing uh, on agriculture and the agriculture business industry in Kazakhstan. And we already made two major observations. First of all, we travel to uh, northern Astana, to uh, the northern part of the country, and we try to observe how the, the industry of agriculture is developing in these areas. And for that, we talked with the farmers in Kazakhstan. We went to the fields when they have oil seeds production. And for that, it's very significant oil seeds. It's a very crucial product, and it's been growing significantly over the last years. Now, when we talk to the farmers, it seemed that they're very, very happy. And that's very significant because when these countries, when the governments of these countries are trying to create projects, they not only want to benefit 
the country as a whole, but they want to go all the way to the people. They wanted to affect the people. They want happy people in the country. So it was good to talk to the farmers because in hand, we were able to see how they were, in fact, benefiting from these kind of cooperations between uh, intergovernment, specifically between Kazakhstan and China. Now, the farmers were saying, they were explaining to us that they had uh, ready customers and this was already very beneficial from them. So that all they, they focused on was actually creating the best product that they can. So they were uh, creating their seeds, they were sowing their seeds, they were delivering them to the plants. We visited one of the factories in, uh, in that region and they have an agreement with the Chinese government. Now, the, the benefit for that is that the farmers, they don't have to go and look for customers. They already have ready customers. They just directly uh, send their seeds, deliver their seeds to the plants who have agreements with the Chinese government. So the Chinese government uh, and the Kazakh government are having these governmental uh, agreements benefit for the people of Kazakhstan as well. Now, uh, just to give another important information about the agriculture industry, for Kazakhstan, the main export goes to Iran. However, the second most important customer is actually China. And so that's very important uh, for their agreements. Now, Kazakhstan's main export is uh, oil, petrol. However, the second one is um, grain. So agriculture is a very significant uh, product for this country. Now, here, right now, uh, we are in Efko Almaty. This is the name of the company where we're at. Uh, we're in the control room of this factory, of this plant right now. And it is one of the biggest companies for all processing in Kazakhstan. So it's very significant to observe the part of where the action is taking place regarding the agricultural business. Now we spoke to the general director, Mr. Nurjan Kujamuratov, and he gave us a lot of information uh, about the agricultural business here. For example, he talked to us about why, why Kazakhstan is actually a very significant customer for China. Um, and that, of course, is because um, the, the high quality of soil, he says, Mr. Uh, Koja Muratov of Efko Almaty company, he told us why China is choosing to buy from here. And the reason is that Kazakhstan has very high quality soil. Now, they don't add chemicals to the soil here in Kazakhstan, specifically for the seeds that are coming to this company. Um, and that gives them, of course, very nature-friendly products. And this is a growing trend, of course, in the world today. And we're trying to create more organic, more natural um, products that are more beneficial for the health of people all around the world. So here, because the soil is actually uh, without chemicals, without additives of chemicals, that makes it very nature-friendly and very people-friendly. So that's one of the reasons that China is actually choosing to buy their products from agricultural products from this country and from this company specifically. Now, one of the main uh, customers for this company is actually China. They have a lot of agreements and the, Mr. Koja Muratov emphasized that even if they produced at full capacity, it would still not fulfill all of the demands from China because there is just so much demand from China. It is that therefore buying from all around the world, but specifically from Kazakhstan, there is a lot. For example, he gave us some of their statistics for uh, between 2016 and 2017, the amount of vegetable oil that was bought, that was exported from Kazakhstan to China, from this company, it increased by five times. So that's a significant increase between 2016 and 2017. And already in the, four, in the first four months of 2017, it has been going over and over, times over. So it's increasing incredibly. And they believe that 2018 is definitely even going to be more than 2018, uh, more than 2017. Now we are in the control room of Efko Almaty, and here we're able to see uh, all of what is happening. These are the wonderful engineers of Efko Almaty. They gave us a little bit of information about the products and the process, the, the production process that goes, that happens in this company. Now this screen shows us the whole process, and the idea is basically that here you can see the seeds. So this is what the beginning of the, uh, of the company process starts with. So this is the first initial product that comes here uh, for the oilseed processing. Now, 
this is going to be what the end result is going to look like. This is the final product. So we see uh, different uh, products that they have. They have sunflower oil, they have rapeseed oil, but they also have soya oil. So they have a lot of different uh, types of oil that they produce in the end. But it's a very delicate, it's a very fine process that it needs to go through. And for this product to actually uh, turn into this bottled process, it takes about 24 hours. So it's actually uh, a relatively short amount of time for this to actually become this. And they described it to us, they explained the process to us. It's a very delicate and very uh, challenging but very fine process. Now, um, first of all, these seeds are cleaned. They are then dried, then they are pressed, and this is of course happening all around us in the different parts of the building. Right now we're just in the control room where it's safer, there's less sound, but all around the factory we saw all of the processes that take place in this company. So once the process is pressed, it becomes oil. That's the first part, the initial phase of the product processing. Then it goes through hydration process before it is bleached, and then they are frozen, then that there is the deodorizer process, and this is all describing, uh, showing them that the whole process is going under control, that there are no problems taking place throughout the process, uh, and they're seeing it 24 hours, they're making sure that the process is uh, taking place very clearly, and that's the last significant process before uh, the whole product is then put through the processing process to become bottled, and that's when they are later transferred to China. Now, when they're transferred to China, one of the uh, ways they're transported is through wa railway transportation. And that's also significant because it also gives us another aspect of the Chinese-Kazakhstan uh, relationship in terms of cooperation, in terms of the SCO uh, joint cooperation in action, because the, uh, the railway transportation is also a different type of cooperation that they have. There's a lot of investments made by China in Kazakhstan regarding railways and one main example for that is actually going to be where we're going to be traveling next in this assignment and that is the Horgos uh, dry port which is a very significant investment that is basically trans uh, it is changing it is completely changing the transportation um, industry because some transport, some products that used to be transported by sea routes is now able to go by dry ports, by a railway station, and it has almost um, gone down to half the amount of time. From uh, Kazakhstan to uh, Europe, you can take uh, what used to take four weeks now takes just two weeks. So that's a significant uh, increase. And then there's significant, of course, value for the products of that they're transporting. So this a company is making use of that investment as well. So they're using the railway system that has also been invested by China and Kazakhstan, uh, also two parts of economic cooperation for SEO states. So we're seeing the agricultural investments in action, but we're also seeing the industrial railway systems in action for two SEO countries that are benefiting some of the two countries. So uh, this has been uh, just two ways that we've been able to uh, observe the two SCO member states in action as they've been able to make benefits for these countries, for the countries, for the governments, but also for the people. That was uh, agricultural investments and agricultural economic cooperation, but also railway co economic cooperation as well. So I'm Mikhail Bardavid in Almaty, Kazakhstan, and we're going to be doing other stories just before the SCO summit that's going to be taking on the 9th and 10th of June in Qingdao in China, and we're going to be giving you all examples of the SCO states putting their efforts, their strengths, their powers into action so that there's a lot of benefits uh, for these member states in the region in terms of economic cooperation, in terms of security cooperation, uh, in terms of investments, uh, so that there is a stable region here in Central Asia so that they're benefiting for their countries as a whole and there's mutual cooperation. And we're going to give you some more great examples in the upcoming days just leading up to the big C SCO summit that's going to be taking place. If you want to follow our stories regarding the summit and all of these important stories taking place in Kazakhstan and China, you can follow us on Facebook on the CGTN page, but also on CGTN.com on our main webpage on our application as well. Thanks for joining us.